So I'm taking a lot of the leftover colors on the palette and I am mixing up a gray. So that's going to be my gray for the front of this. And it's approximately the same color on the end. There, that's all I'm going to do for that building. And then around it, I'm going to add some of the green. Wow. Uh, I'm going to have you look out into the water in a minute, and there's a huge mist, a wall of mist that's coming in. So as I was looking up to paint the edge of this, it's completely covered in mist now, which is going to be kind of cool. So I'm going to watch and see what happens because everything that I was painting over here has now disappeared. So how am I going to accommodate that? And I think what I'm going to do is wait a little bit and watch how it comes across the water. This is so fun. This is exactly what we were talking about. That when you're outside in the open air, you're really working in collaboration with everything happening around you. So we have this wonderful mist that's come in. And now you as the artist need to make a decision. Are you going to go with the plan that you had before? Are you going to change your plan and incorporate this new atmospheric condition? And this is something you need to think about. As the mist comes in, the water completely changes color. As you know, when the water's flat, it reflects the sky. With the mist over it, the sky is so misty that it almost has the color of sand going much farther out. And the water, instead of being a more clear blue, is much grayer now and greener. So you need to think about, should I change these colors to incorporate? And I think we're going to give it a try. There was a painting that I love by John Singer Sargent um, of uh, World War One, uh, World War One, and he has uh, World War Two, I guess, and he has uh, a bunch of um, uh, soldiers sitting by a campfire, and the campfire smoke is coming up. And it was a real challenge to figure out how to paint the smoke around an atmosphere. So this is similar to that. It's not smoke, of course. It's it's a mist, but to figure out how to paint the mist, and I think what we're going to do, particularly since we're working on this watercolor board is to put more gray in the water and then to have it be wet, have it swirl around, and have it be very misty. We'll see what happens. We're kind of changing horses in the middle of the stream here, so who knows? But here's what we're going to do. Oh, and I see I'm dropping water here. Here is this hill, this dune that we're sitting on. Here in the background is where you can see land and a lot of ships or boats. And right now, I can't see any of it because of the mist. So I'm going to start working a little bit on the sand. And the sand here, I'm adding some water just so the sand can um, be a gentle combination of colors. This is just so pretty out. It's so fascinating to look out and to see everything changing. So we're going to go back to I'm going to gray down the water. And I'm actually pulling some of this color up into the sky and kind of painting over everything. 
hopefully we'll get some of that blurry stuff that we're looking for. Where the land is going to be just disappearing into the mist. I have a little bit of paint on my paper towel that I'm picking up and by blurring it around it's also allowing me to use some of the native color that I have here and to bring it into the mist. We're going to add a little bit more color in the front of the water. As the mist came across, it really muted most of the color. But as the water is closer to us, it has a little bit more color. So I'm going to add some more color in the water closer to us. Not too bright or jarring, but just a little bit more color. So. A little bit more blue on that. I'm using a Windsor blue that's going to be too much. There we go. And at this point, I am painting around where these imaginary puffs of foam are coming out. I'm going to remove my tape that's been helping me pay attention to what I'm doing here and I'm painting around uh, the edge of the foam. This will begin to articulate where the wave is cresting. At this point in the painting, it's a good time to relax. I am using a little bit smaller brush so I can think about the poetry, the emotion, the energy that's happening at the crest of these waves. As you'll notice too, as it's starting to form its roll, part of it will be rolling and then part of it will be the white foamy part. So in this foamy part, you'll often see all these, uh, oh, it's almost like a net of white that's following across over the top of the wave. So I'm gonna, whoops, too bright, too bright, too bright. So I'm gonna paint this net of foam. And it helps me to kind of think of it as a net because that helps me think of the shape in, in, a, mm, in an organic way that uh, seems natural to the, to the water coming across. Now here's the front part of the foam.
This is a little too green, so I'm trying to find the right amount of blue without making it too bright. And again, I'm going to kind of dull it down. This time I'm going to use a little bit of brown to dull it down. A teeny bit of orange is going to make it uh, be also a complementary color. So I'm going to use a little bit of orange to dull it down. I think that's good. It's a little dark, but I'm trying to do a dark stripe in here at the top of the crest of this wave. I'm going to take some water and blend this in so it looks pretty natural back here. Again, with the mist out here, it's a little tricky because I don't want it to be too distinct. Normally, I'd have it be quite distinct here, but with the mist, it's kind of a, um, playing some tricks on me. I'm going to take a paper towel and just take a little of the color off to make sure it's blending nicely into the mist again. Okay, then this I'm making more brown. I don't want it that dark though. Um, in the front of the foam that's coming onto the beach, as the beach gets wet, it's a darker brown. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I want to make sure I can blend this in as I go. I want it dark at the leading edge, at, actually at the background edge, and light at the leading edge. This is probably a little greener than I would want it. So I'll try to adjust the color here in a few minutes. I want to make sure I don't have a hard, hard line. I don't know if you can hear it, but the sea lions have started to, to bark, and so I can hear it. And it it adds to this wonderful ambiance of being at the beach. It's nice to get out of your regular routine and try something different and new and go to places where the sounds and the, the atmosphere, the weather is different. It's really refreshing. So you can begin to see now that this looks like the front edge of the curl of uh, when the foam comes into the beach. Great sounds of the waves. And usually, because of how the waves come in, there's another front edge too, and it it's usually has like a scalloped or rounded edge. So I'm gonna imply that here. Because our cliff is hanging over the beach, it will come completely up to the edge of where we are. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of, because that has that pretty teal color in here, I'm gonna put a little bit of that in here too. And it's nice also to add a little bit of reflection in the sand, so I'll add a little bit of that while I'm working on it. And I think for that right now, I'm just going to take a little of this color. Okay. I'm going to leave that for now. And smooth this out a little bit.
I think I'm going to let that dry and we'll be back in a couple minutes. We're back to this painting on the beach and as a reminder, this is the dune that we're sitting on. This is a the, little bit of the sand on the beach. We're creating the waves that'll be coming in. We had this peninsula sitting out, uh, this triangle of land, and then this fantastic wall of mist came through, so I made it very foggy. The mist never got quite to the beach, so this is still going to be distinct. This will be blurry, and hopefully it'll all come together like one painting. We'll see when we're done. You never know until you're absolutely done. So to go to this next section, what I am going to do is to turn my painting upside down because it's just a little bit easier for me to work from a dark to a light as it goes towards me. For me, it always bothers me if I'm going to be painting something from dark to light and it seems like it's not my native flow. So I'm going to put some water in here and just a little bit. I do not want it to get too wet and I'm going right up to my blue lines here because that's part of the water too. So just a little bit of water. On this board it's kind of interesting. You can see where the water saturates in and makes it, it appears brown but it's really just the water saturating in. There's a cute little lizard over here that's just come over to watch me. <laughs> the bottom of the wave is generally darker than the top of the wave, so that's where I'm going to start my color. And I'm going to tilt it a little bit towards me, so some of the natural flow of the water is going to pull it down. But then on the other hand, I can add it, I can assist it too. And I know this is running down and I'm not going to worry about right, that right this minute. This one I'm more concerned about it because it's right through the middle of the painting. But I think I got it. And I'm just going to let the water move up the painting or down the painting, however you see it. Little lizard friend came by. It's one of the beautiful things about watercolor is actually just really letting it run. Thank you for watching. Join us next time. The Watercolor with Jane M. Mason.